What is going on, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Emma Gardner live stream. I am so sorry that I'm a little bit late, but uh, I am very excited to be here today and uh, tonight, I should say. And we are live, so thank you all so much for joining. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, very again, very sorry that I'm late. Um, we have two children now to put down to bed, and so Mrs. Emma Gardner uh, may or may not join us depending on how. Uh, depending on how the little one goes down to bed. Um, but we are here. I am here. I just got one. We kind of <laughs> split the difference. I got one down. She's getting the other one down. And so we're, I said, we're just here. We're happy. So uh, thank you guys so very much for your support. I am very excited for today. Uh, we're going to be doing launch day 2.0. Now it is going to be much subdued from our normal launch day festivities. And that's because, um, well, we only do one main launch day, but every once in a while, we will, um, you know, we'll kind of, we like to uh, launch new varieties. We like to hype them up. We like to get you guys excited because part of our mission at My Gardener is to get people excited about gardening. And there's lots of times where we'll kind of just quietly release some new things. But then there's some times where we say, look, let's do it all at once. And so uh, with that being said, um, we're going to, uh, yeah, so for those of you that don't even know what we're launching, um, we are launching the new product offerings uh, over at mygardener.com. Uh, for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, we have a seed shop. Um, and at that seed shop, we sell fertilizer that's you know produced and uh, branded and everything is done by us. We have seeds, we pack, we brand, and everything is done by us. Um, Basically, uh, we have uh, merch, right? Everything is branded. Am I Gardener? We will uh, partner with other companies that you know we can't do things. Uh, maybe it's too difficult. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe it's whatever, right? Um, we partner with those companies to you know make an all inclusive environment where you can come, you can learn about gardening for free. Once you gain, once you gain the confidence, then you can basically feel confident in what you're getting for your garden from migardener.com. So it's kind of an all-inclusive little thing. And we like to be, uh, be uh, a very active participant in the community. And that's really what live, you know, these live streams and launch parties are intended for. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I was gonna welcome some people into the live stream here and then we'll get started. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Justin, hello. I love the product customer for years now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Justin. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mary says, love that your seeds are still affordable. Thank you. I uh, I will shop at my gardener. I appreciate that, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, we we have, you know, we've kind of made a promise to all of you that we are not raising our prices this year. I can't say that that's going to be the, the case next year, but everything is always in line with it being rational, you know, we don't we don't do anything that is not that we wouldn't done, want done to ourselves, right? Um, we operate on the golden rule: treat others the way you would like to be treated. And so, when it comes to our pricing, um, we were met with a lot of pricing increases from our farmers because we have farmers that grow seed for us, and you know, fertilizer costs have gone up, seed costs have gone up, land prices have gone up, skyrocketed. Um, and so, if fuel costs have gone up to operate tractors and stuff like that, so it has, everything has gone up substantially. Even the cost of labor has gone up substantially. But that being said, we said, look, we will absorb some of those costs because I don't want to necessarily raise prices this year. Next year is a different story. But this year, I wanted to be that person that kind of did the opposite of whatever else was doing. And so that's what we're doing. So I appreciate that, Mary. Thank you so much. That really means a lot. So yeah, I, I want people this year more than ever to know that you can take control of your food supply, that you can grow your own garden, feel confident in that, and that you, know, you don't even have to shop at mygardener.com. If you don't want to get seeds from us, that's totally fine. I just love the fact that we offer the seeds, we offer the fertilizer, they're things that we use in our garden, but you can also just watch our videos for totally free and go elsewhere. No skin off my back whatsoever. Because at the end of the day, our mission is to empower, encourage, and inspire the not only the up and coming generation of potential gardeners, but the past generations, you know, my dad's generation and my dad's dad's generation of gardeners that 
just want to learn something, be a part of a community, and you know, make gardening fun again. So, uh, so it's really, really fun to be a part of that. All right, so lots of people, over 700 people. Welcome everybody. We are going to get started here because we have a lot to cover. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna start here in, do you guys wanna count it down? So uh, the store is already stocked. All the new items are stocked, but we're gonna go through them. We're gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna go through them all. And it's going to allow you guys to shop in real time. So if you guys want to get some seeds, you can definitely get some seeds. If not, no big deal. So with that being said, we're going to count it down in three, two, one, and boom, launch. <laughs> Pretty anticlimactic in terms of that, if you're, if I'm being honest. Um, but you guys, uh, yeah. You guys know that usually for launch day, launch day is a big deal. We put everything in the in this, uh, store at the same time. It is like open for people to shop. It's crazy. It's nuts. We have a confetti drop. We pop poppers and it's crazy. But this one's a little more subdued. So this offers me time to hang out with you guys, answer any questions you might have, and um, kind of just, again, get excited about these new varieties because I love new varieties. I love new varieties. I can say that everyone that works with me that is part of the MI Gardener team also always gets really excited about new varieties. They don't get as excited as I do. Let's be real. But that's because I'm weird. <laughs> and you guys might be weird too. But they all are very excited. They've all been really looking forward to, to the new product drops. They love seeing people's responses too. Like they love just seeing you know which ones are which ones are fan favorites which ones are kind of these hidden gems they like seeing just they they like seeing kind of the, the back end operations when it comes to the new varieties so very excited uh so with that being said i'm gonna pop you guys over we're gonna go check out migardener.com so we're going to do one of these all right and i'm gonna do one of these you guys can see this sweet so uh, let me know here. Um, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to see myself here, sadly. Um, let's actually, I can do, <laughs> okay, I can do this. Give me one second here. I'm just duplicating the window so that I can. See what I'm doing. <laughs> and I can, there, yeah. because I'm going to be talking about, there we go. Cool. That way I can see your guys' comments and I can talk about the new varieties. So, that being said, uh, welcome to mygardener.com. If you have not yet been here, this is the homepage. This is what you're greeted with. We have a nice little scrolling thing here that kind of highlights some of the, some of the big things and uh, some of the, some of the new things you guys might know, obviously the Loco Coco Core. This has been one of our best sellers. It's been an absolutely incredible thing. We just launched it last week. It is awesome. And uh, so we're really, really proud of that. But uh, that you're not here for that. We're here to talk about the new seeds. And so um, for those of you that also want to check out a digital catalog, you guys can check out a digital catalog right over here. Um, is my mouse showing up, you guys? Let me know just real quick. Sorry, is my mouse showing up? I want to make sure that you can see my mouse so we can kind of so I can highlight things if I need to. If my mouse isn't showing up, then yeah. Um, okay, so no, the mouse is not showing up. No mouse. Okay. All right, so here's the catalog, 2023 catalog. If you want to click this, you can actually click this and it will allow you to view a digital catalog. We don't do a paper catalog because the, uh, yeah, because the, um, uh, yeah, there you go, yeah, yes, it is. Nice. So I had basically clicked off of the, I clicked off of the screen here. Okay.
There we go. Boom. Okay, I just want to be able to read your comments here. Fantastic. Okie dokie. Artichoke. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you can see here, fantastic. Mouse is active. Great. Love it. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, alrighty. So the first thing I want to cover is out of stock. This is before we even talk about the new items, I want to cover just out of stock. So if you come here to seeds, you go to all seeds, you're going to notice that there are some items that are sold out. Obviously, you're going to see the item, the thing that says sold out, sold out, sold out. Okay. There's a decent amount that's sold out. Now, I will say this. What is sold out now will not be sold out in a week or two. We are restocking every single week. And the reason why we do free shipping on seed orders of $12 or more is so that you can get free shipping when you have to come back for some of these things, right? Like if you want the, the Italian large leaf basil, we're going to be stocking that in less than a week. In less than a week, it's being back in stock, right? Like rich basil, maybe two to three weeks, right? These are all coming back in stock at different times. Um, the purple ruffles basil, we just bought that from one of our farmers and um, that's coming in. Hopefully sometime this week, we'll probably have it in stock maybe next week within three weeks, right? These are all going to be different. I cannot say what, you know, when something is coming back in stock. What I can say is that if you see it, I would grab it. The reason why is because our prices are below what they should be, right? The, the general seed market, and I hear this from everybody, Luke, you need to raise your prices. This is why things are sold out. You're, you're underselling your product. I made a promise to all of you that we were going to go this year and reassess next year because it's been a wild year. It's been a lot of craziness. But that being said, currently I do understand that our seed prices are below market average and that's why stuff is selling out very fast. We are able to restock the store. We're still supporting our, all of our farmers and that's great. Um, you know, we, we are doing what we can do, but that does mean that if you wait for some stuff, there will other, be other stuff that's sold out. And then when other stuff comes back in stock, there will be more stuff that's sold out. It's going to be just a constant game of popcorn. So if you want to get something, now is when I get it. But if you want to come back, you can get free shipping. You just got to throw in six packets of seed and you got free shipping. That's it. Just six packets of seed and you get free shipping. So we made it simple enough that you can do that. That's why we have free shipping. So let's talk about new items, right? That's what you guys are all here for. So let's talk about new items. Um, yes, and if it says out of stock or sold, or sorry, sold out, it's not sold out for the whole year. It's sold out for just the time being and they will constantly come back in stock. But what you can do is you can click this, it says sold out, right? And you can join the wait list, right? You can join the wait list by clicking notify me when available, right? There you go. Throw in your email right here. And we do not see this. We do not use this for marketing purposes. We don't sell that, nothing. All it is is just a thing that when the Blue Lake Bush Bean or whatever variety comes back in stock, you will get an email. Now, if you join 50 different wait lists, you're going to get 50 different emails. <laughs> We've had a couple people that are like, you promised not to spam me. My email is full of these, these notifications. And I'm like, yes, because it's for each individual item. That way you're not being notified for things that you don't care about. And you are being notified for the things you do care about. And they're going to be coming in stock all the time. So with that being said, let's talk about the new varieties. I'm super excited. All right, so you come here, this fancy little tag, new seeds for 2023, recommend clicking that. And we're gonna, see, you're gonna see some of the seeds that we already talked about, diamond eggplant, very excited about that. The Listada di uh, Gandia eggplant, beautiful. It's almost like a Rosa Bianca, but it's a little bit larger. Absolutely stunning, incredible. The UC 157 asparagus, this is, uh, a asparagus bread for the south. It's bread for the humidity of the coast. You can grow it here in Michigan as well. It does very, very well. But does it, you know, it uh it does really well in the coastal regions. The Tavera Haricot bean, absolutely beautiful French slenderette bean. These are all new for this year, but they're not new for today. We're just working into that. The 
Jacob's cattle bean, beautiful, absolutely stunning, um, bicolored bean, soup bean, it's a drying bean. The Maxibel haricot bean, wow, one of my favorite beans, it's so beautiful. So it's like eight to nine inch long beans. They're super slender, French bean, amazing. Antiqua bean, phenomenal. Magnum bean, quickly becoming a crowd favorite for a lot of market gardeners just because of how productive it is. Um, the Forma Nova beet, this is a uh, what you use for like baby beets. A lot of market gardeners and home gardeners are turning to the Forma Nova beet. Incredible. It's resistant to a lot of different, you know, fungal diseases and stuff that affects beets. Um, so those are great. The DeCicio broccoli, awesome variety. Absolutely love it. Um, it's a sprouting broccoli. So you're getting many different, uh, many different heads rather than one big head. Black Magic Kale, similar to La Sonato, but it is, um, it is uh, a little darker in color. A lot more cold hardy than Lassonado. The Orange Glow Watermelon, we don't have a picture for that yet. So if you are someone that has grown the Orange Glow Watermelon, get in touch with me. I would love to put that picture up there. Um, we just don't have any pictures of the Orange Glow Watermelon at this time. The Sweet Siberian Watermelon. Again, these are all new for 2023, but they're not even the ones we're talking about today. These are ones that are new for 2023, but we have even newer ones. I'm just building up because a lot of you don't even know we even have these new seeds um so we've got <clears throat> with the sweet siberian watermelon this is a orange fleshed watermelon it is incredible absolutely super sweet it does not have the mottled flesh like your standard watermelon it's a just a standard all green flesh watermelon incredible the red geneva onion this is a beautiful long day red onion it is a uh, really, really ruby red, burgundy in color, incredible, but with a really white flesh, super pretty. Sugar Ann Pea, Avalanche Pea, Blizzard Pea, Sweet Gem Pea, and Green Arrow Pea. Some of the fan favorites for peas, a lot of you guys have been asking us to carry more peas, so we have shelling peas and snap peas. The... Um, is the mulatto isleno pepper. It's very similar to a poblano, but it's more of a chocolatey color. Um, very smoky, absolutely incredible. Uh, we have the chili de arbol, one of my favorite. Oh, this is like such a favorite pepper of mine. It is, um, it's special because it's peppers that uh, Cindy's parents, my, my in-laws um, have come to use in their culture and their food for, for many years. So we have that. Um, we also have the orange cayenne and the purple cayenne. Great varieties. The emerald giant bell pepper. Uh, the Jamaican yellow mushroom pepper. Beautiful. We also have the weeby little pumpkin. And the khaki pumpkin. Now the khaki pumpkin, for those of you that don't know, has a totally, a truly hullless pumpkin. The seeds that are inside the pumpkin quite literally come out with no hull. That means you can take them, you can dry them and eat them raw, or you can roast them and you can make your own, uh, you can make your own like roasted pumpkin seeds. But what is phenomenal is making your own pumpkin seed hummus. Let me tell you, pumpkin seed hummus, for those of you that don't know, is something that I will have to do a video on, I think. I think it is, wow. Pumpkin seed hummus. You roast them. You treat them just like pine nuts. Throw in some olive oil, some basil, uh, some Parmesan. Uh, you know, if you don't want to go with Parmesan, that's fine. Don't go with Parmesan. Um, uh, or sorry, that, so that, that's the that's the pumpkin seed pesto. But then there's also uh, the pumpkin seed hummus, where you add tahini, pumpkin seeds, and uh, you blend it up, and then you throw in like it could be, um, it could be black beans, it could be pinto beans, right, is your, your bean base, garbanzo beans even. But it just adds this really incredible nutty flavor. So two recipes you can make with the khaki pumpkin seeds. Wow, it's phenomenal. And you get such, such incredible fatty acids and uh, lots of different vitamins from the pumpkin seeds. Um, we have the, Vero, the sorry, not the Viroflay, the Butterfly spinach and the winter giant spinach. These are two new spinach varieties to migardener.com. 
Um, they are uh, both just fantastic varieties of spinach. I can't speak highly enough. Butterfly is a very buttery baby spinach, whereas winter giant spinach is like honking huge leaves. Then we have the musk de Maroc. Uh, that is a um, that is like a, a warted squash, very warty, but once you roast it, ooh, ooh, it's good, so good, almost completely strainless, very creamy. Then there's the golden the Gills golden pippin squash. It's an acorn squash, beautiful little uh, yellow squashes. The moonbeam grape, the Dr uh, Drusba tomato, mountain princess tomato, the Rosa de Bern, supernova grape tomato. Um, you guys know we've talked about a lot of these, right? Uh, the small red cherry tomato, baby Roma that is quickly becoming just an absolute fan favorite for a lot of you guys. Uh, the Lucky Tiger Tomato, Fireworks Tomato. Look at this. There's so many new varieties. The Ananas Noir, otherwise known as Black Pineapple. That's been a fan favorite for a long time. I'm going to stay hydrated. Isis Candy. The Dark Orange Muscat Tomato. It's a beautiful, like, rusty orange. Absolutely incredible. Beef Steak, Yellow Tomato, and Carbon Tomato. And then we have a cherrylicious mix. Now, this is not one plant producing multiple different colored cherry tomatoes. Contrary to most people's belief, this is a mix of cherry tomatoes that we just take and we combine them all together. So and you're getting a smorgasbord of cherry tomatoes, right? So you're not getting one plant that produces four different colored tomatoes. Um, then we have other things too. You know, we have some hydroponic supplies. We have wasp nest decoys, everything like that. So now this is the new stuff. Are you ready for the new stuff? I am ready. We have Verdil spinach. Check this out. Look at this spinach. This is such an incredible, sorry. This is such an incredible spear shaped spinach. There is what they call lobed leaf spinach and spear, uh, spear leaf spinach. This is a spear leaf spinach. It is Incredible. Or sorry, this is lobe leaf. I'm so sorry. So sorry. This is a lobe leafed spinach. Um, it is very similar to the to the American spinach or the butterfly spinach. Um, absolutely incredible. Um, but this is commonly used as like baby spinach. One of the more cold hardy spinach varieties. Then we have uh, stinging nettle. A lot of you want me to carry wanted me to carry stinging nettle, so we got stinging nettle. We just uh, got this in. Stinging nettle is a medicinal herb. Um, people use it for making nettle tea. You can make a tincture. You can uh, you can also take this and um, you can make you know uh, like a compost with it, right? So wonderful, all around, amazing, amazing herb. Goji berries, you guys. Goji berries. That's right. I am super pumped about this. Uh, it is a perennial. It's going to grow extremely well in most growing zones. Um, it is incredibly high in vitamin C. Uh, so it is phenomenal. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, goji berries. I am very, very excited about. We have Matt's Wild Cherry. Brand new, just dropped. Just dropped today, Matt's Wild Cherry. This is a fan favorite. Yeah, it's an indeterminate variety tomato. So you guys are going to absolutely be able to grow this all season long. Um, but the teeny tiny little fruits pack a punch. Such good tomato flavor. Really high acid, just snackable, delicious, incredible. Another one, the kombucha squash. Um, we've got here, this is a kind of an Asian style squash. Very, very popular amongst a lot of gardeners. The kabocha or kabocha, or kabocha squash um, is, I mean, if you're looking for uh, a unique, culturally significant crop to grow, try the kabocha squash. That's because um, these were originally grown over in Japan. Um, it's known as a Japanese pumpkin for a reason. And that's because it's highly prized because uh, the 
um, the winter, it's a winter squash, so it's going to have a long shelf life. But uh, because um, you know squashes and winter squashes in particular have such cultural significance in uh, Japanese culture, um, this one is really, really important to us. We've had a lot of people wanting us to carry kabocha squash that uh, you know just want to grow it for the cultural significance, the fact that it is delicious, the fact that you know the seeds are, are highly nutritious, um, but also the fact that it has an incredibly long shelf life is something that a lot of you have uh, have asked for. So we brought that in. Uh, then we have the North Georgia candy roaster squash. This is an incredibly long, you know, uh, oblong squash, but it is one of the sweetest squashes I have ever tasted. It's a winter squash. So this is going to be like your butternut or acorn squash, things like that. But this thing, when roasted, is as sweet as a sweet potato. Not even kidding you. You don't even need brown sugar. If you're someone that puts brown sugar on your squashes, um, like your butternut squash, you're going to be, it's too sweet. This thing is so incredibly sweet. You got to give it a shot. It's a must. It's a must. Oh, sorry guys. I am a little tired. I would, I'll be honest. Oh, I woke up early this morning and we were out in the greenhouse working, working, working. We got our, if you want to see a video of the greenhouse and what it looks like right now, uh, go check out our Facebook page. Um, or for those that are viewing on Facebook, you can go check it out. Uh, but yeah, we we got all the we got all of the the shelving put on or put in, and that was a lot of lugging, cinder blocks and pallets, and it was it was a lot of work. Now this is the fan favorite of the fan favorite. This thing will absolutely sell out quickly. I guarantee it. The honey nut squash. Now this came on the scene about three, four years ago. The seeds were so expensive that even at fair market price, we just couldn't afford. I mean, we'd be giving people like two or three seeds in a pack. And even now we're only providing 10 seeds in a pack. But enough of our farmers are starting to, to know about it and grow it that um, the prices come down significantly. And so it really allowed us to finally carry the honey nut squash. And this is also unrivaled as one of the sweetest butternut squash varieties that has ever existed. Um, so it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Now we have another, this is a cute little itty bitty summer squash. This is a lemon squash. Now these look like little lemons for good reason. They are super cute. Um, they are uh, kind of similar in shape and size to the eight ball zucchini, but these are a squash. And so these are really, really pretty. Highly recommend them. These are fun to grow. These are really, really pretty. So there's that. Now we have another one. This is one you guys probably have never seen before. Very, very proud to offer this one. This has been one that I've set my sights on for about three years now. We finally got the ability to carry the long pie pumpkin. Now, this is a long, hefty pumpkin. Grows more like a butternut squash, but it is un bearably sweet for making pumpkins, uh, pumpkin pie. It is phenomenal. Um, if you like uh, making pumpkin pie from homegrown pumpkins, <coughs> excuse me, bless me. <coughs> Woo, excuse me, sorry. Ah, uh, it is one of the most amazing uh, pumpkin uh, pie pumpkins. So yeah, I recommend trying it. It is phenomenal. Um, each pumpkin will weigh, weigh right around eight to 10 pounds. And the fruits are um, between about 14 to 16 inches long. So really incredible. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Um, I, I was in the greenhouse and um, I must have stirred up my allergies because uh, I've been sneezing all day, <laughs> all day. Uh, the next one is the Carantan League. 
Uh, this is um, this is just another addition to our leak option. We only have one leak right now, uh, so this is more of a European leak. And what's what's great is the fact that it's a really fat stem. Um, traditionally, people don't like to grow leeks because their stems are quite narrow. And by the time you peel off the outer leaves, you're not really left with anything. These Carrington leeks are super hefty in size, giving you a really great uh, yield on your, on your leek harvest. Now, now, let me tell you about the fireworks pepper. Now this one is edible, though, though it is ornamental, I want you guys to know here, right? It's still edible. The only reason why it's ornamental is because of the fact that um, it is not really grown for its flavor, right? It's grown more for its showy peppers. You can eat this. A lot of people have a misconception that if it's ornamental, you can't eat it. Um, the reason why a lot of people get that perception is because a lot of ornamentals are sprayed with a lot of chemicals. And so a lot of chemicals on ornamentals that you wouldn't want to be ingesting. However, because these are seed form, you can grow the ornamental pepper, grow them for their absolutely beautiful uh, colors. Yeah, I mean, you're like, there's no editing. This is like, this is what they look like. This is absolutely incredible. Um, but they, they can be grown and consumed. So you can enjoy them, enjoy their beauty, and eat them. They are quite spicy, though. Um, then we have the firecracker tomato, or tomato, the firecracker pepper. This is the same kind of color scheme as the fireworks, only these are more of a uh, kind of like a, kind of a, like a little pimento-shaped pepper, right? Um, and so... They, again, they are edible, but they are quite spicy. Um, and so very, very beautiful. Extremely excited to have these two ornamental peppers. A lot of you have wanted us to carry them. And so finally, we're doing just that. Then we have the pumpkin spice jalapeno pepper. And this is an orange jalapeno. Check it out. Incredible. An orange jalapeno pepper. And not only is it orange, but it is the same level of heat as your standard green pepper. So uh, this is a, you know, again, a true orange jalapeno pepper. Um, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but jalapenos will turn red if you leave them on the plant long enough. And so rather than turn red, they're going to start out as green, like you see up here. And then when they ripen fully, they're going to be orange. So uh, again, but also contrary to the name, it does not taste like pumpkin spice. <laughs> Let's see. And we have the Nordic Carm. The Nordic Carm melon is a French melon. It's an heirloom melon. Absolutely sensational. If you guys really have come to like the, uh, like the, oh, there's quite, well, we carry quite a few different French melons. Um, the Prescott Fond Blanc melon is one, um, but the Prescott Fond Blanc is a little more ugly. This one is just absolutely beautiful. It looks like a squash without all the warts, but it just is super unbelievably sweet. It is incredible. But I want to I want to highlight here: the all green flesh has a fragrant aroma of mulling spices and fruity scents. So if you guys have ever had like a mold cider, like cloves, um, cloves, uh, nutmeg, cardamom, um, cinnamon, it has a kind of spicy mulling spice aroma to it. Absolutely sensational. You have to try this one if you like you if you like trying heirloom melons. Next is the Rocky Ford cantaloupe. This is a green fleshed cantaloupe, not a uh, not a honeydew. This is a cantaloupe, green fleshed cantaloupe. So definitely give this one a shot. It is super beautiful. This has been around for a very long time. The Rocky Ford cantaloupe has been around for 
decades, but we just decided to carry it for the first time ever <laughs> at MI Gardener. So really, really excited about it. Yes, the pumpkin spice jalapeno is spicy. It's just as hot as a regular jalapeno. Uh, next is the crisp mint lettuce. Uh, this is a uh, basically just a upright lettuce. However, these frilly leaves, look at these leaves, you guys. Look at these leaves. So incredible. Uh, these leaves are, they're, they're ruffled. So it's upright like a romaine, but it's ruffled almost like a leaf lettuce. It is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, it stays really crunchy, does not get really bitter. So this is definitely one that you would really like to grow if you enjoy growing lettuce. Pablo, this is one of my favorite, uh, uh, one of my favorite varieties of iceberg because it's a bicolored iceberg. Check it out, you guys. Check this out. This is incredible. Uh, so this is totally new. It's a bicolored, crisp head iceberg variety of lettuce. Um, look at that red. Can you just can you get a load of that? Man, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Super beautiful. This is definitely on like my must grow list for this year. And with 500 seeds, I mean, think about it. Uh, if, if a single head of lettuce costs you like $4 at the grocery store, now it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's more like, it's more like uh, whatever $2 is divided by 500. We're talking like pennies, pennies, folks. It's crazy. So. Yeah, it is so pretty. That's right. Yeah, absolutely super pretty, Julie. Then we have the Catskill Brussels sprouts. This is one that, again, has been around for, I mean, we're talking decades. I'm almost ashamed I haven't carried this one sooner. A lot of you have requested us to carry this one. This is just a fan favorite. Um, I mean, it was literally introduced, as you can see, in the 19th century. Um, so, I mean, we're talking, it's, it's been around for a long time. Um, but it once was one of the most important commercial varieties um, because of just the heavy yields that it provides, the uh, the cold hardiness that it provides, um, and it gets its name from being raised in the Catskill Mountains of New York. So, yeah, really, really cool variety. This one I am pumped about. I'm, I'm pumped about all of them. Let's be real. But Lion's Mane Chives is probably up there is my top five most exciting varieties we're talking about right now. Now, Lion's Mane Chives is incredibly rare. Very, very rare. Um, the flat leaves makes it almost like a, like a garlic leaf or like a leek leaf. They are not tubes like, like straws, like normal chives, right? Not straws. They are flat. It's like blades of grass, but thick blades of grass. They are sensational. The flavor on these is crazy. You guys have to try this one. It's very rare. This is another one that I guarantee you will positively sell out. So give this one a shot. Here's another one. This one is just, I'm so excited about this one. Now, not because it's any different than regular cilantro. Let's be real. But confetti cilantro is a cilantro that has frilly leaves. It looks more like dill than it does like cilantro. And so if you like something that gives it just a cool texture, but great cilantro flavor, this is one for you. I would highly, highly recommend trying this. It will uh, definitely, definitely be a fan favorite for sure. Then we have some, uh, so these are, uh, yes, a, um, uh, Adrian, uh, Adriana, the flavor is the same, is the same. That, yeah, that Virginia, the cilantro is so cool. Yeah, it is super cool. It is super cool. Uh, so now I want to talk about, these are some, uh, again, culturally specific, important beans that, um, that we're going to kind of highlight here. You guys know that we like to carry beans or, or not, not just beans, but 
but vegetables that have kind of cultural significance, it's really important for us just because I love heirlooms. And the only reason why we have heirlooms today is because someone took the time to save the seeds. But some, for some people, the reason why they took time to save the seeds is because it was what they relied on for their survival. And that brings a lot of cultural uh, significance and importance to the meaning heirloom seed. And so some of these ones are ones that are very near and dear to my heart just because of uh, Cindy's ancestry and just you know, the family that I, uh, you know, that I have come to know and love and respect so much. So um, when we carried some of these, uh, these are important for that reason. So the Ayacote Morado bean, um, I probably butchered that. So you could probably do a better job at pronouncing, uh, pronouncing that than I can. But um, look at the color on these beans. Look at the color. This is a drying bean. But look at the color of these beans. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like these are some of the prettiest beans I think I could possibly uh, have found. Um, but it is drying bean and it's native to Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, it's a runner bean variety. It produces large pods, um, but the, the deep purple color is incredible. But they use this in so many different dishes from just, you know, regular black beans to, um, uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so uh, the the red beans um, in there kind of give this like beautiful color. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now, here's another one. Now this one, um, I'm going to try to not get emotional with this one. This is like, this one is really important to me. Um, Javier, he watches a lot of our videos and he shows all of his friends. Um, I'm already crying. Great. This is just awesome. So you guys are probably thinking I'm like a complete idiot for like tearing up over this variety. But uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, so Javier is my father-in-law and um, he grew up in Mexico before he immigrated here. To, he raised beans. His whole family raised beans on, on bean farms. And it's incredibly culturally significant, but this is a bean that he grew on his farm. Um, not this specific bean, but this variety. And this was so important to his family's livelihood that uh, allowed him to be able to, you know, be able to, you know, have a dream, be able to move to the States um, and, and make a name for himself here. And if it wasn't for that, it wasn't for, you know, this bean significance, um, it, you know, it would be something that, uh, something that, you know, Cindy wouldn't be around today. I wouldn't have married Cindy if it wasn't really for this bean in a weird roundabout way. And so um, it's really freaking cool. Uh, and it's just a drying bean. I just carried it just because it had incredible significance to me and, you know, my family. But uh it, it's, let's put it this way. It's going to be an amazing bean no matter what, but I couldn't not carry it. When I showed Javier this, uh, this bean, he just, he, he was raving about it. He was absolutely raving about it. He just, he, he loved this bean so much. So, um, so, um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Then there's the black garbanzo bean. Um, <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, this is contrary to the regular garbanzo bean. Um, the <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Laura I, or Laurie. I appreciate that. Um, so the black garbanzo bean is just a regular garbanzo bean, only it's dark in color, and so you can treat this almost like a black bean, but you can. Um, you can grow it like a regular garbanzo bean. Um, it's just really cool. And I saw this, I was like, we absolutely have to have it, have to. So the purple potted bean, uh, this is, um, so this is a pole bean. Um, it is a snack bean. 
It is currently sold out. We are going to be putting this one in stock fairly soon. So, you know, don't worry. Um, we're still packing some of these as well. So, for instance, the uh, the Rio Zappe bean is in stock, right? Um, but the Ayacote Murado bean uh, actually is in stock. We just, we just packed this today. So we're still in the process of packing some of these today. Um, and then uh, last but not least, last but not least, is the ideal market pull bean. Um, so uh, the the uh, ideal market pull bean is one that is a fan favorite for so many reasons. But one of them is the productivity, the fact that um, this has been, as you can see, it's been grown since 1914. So it has an incredible history behind the, you know, just behind the variety. But also um, this was before, uh, you know, before the, the you know, the, the Blue Lake Bush Bean, right? Before the Blue Lake Pole Bean, before a lot of these, the, the standard household name varieties we have today, like the Landreth Stringless and stuff like that, you had the ideal market pole bean. And the ideal market pole bean was uh, one that a lot of people grew to take to market because it was incredibly prolific. It produced a lot and um, and it was dependable. So uh, we, we had to carry this one too, just because it had a great history, a great story to it. So those are all of the new varieties. Uh, I know you guys are asking about the mystery seeds. So we have a mystery squash and we have a mystery melon. Um, this could be any one of the squashes we carry and any of the melons we carry. Um, we did this because some people, we do have a mystery seed packet. You have no idea what you're going to get. But some people said, I want to know kind of roughly at least what I'm planting, right? So I know how to space it or what I'm expecting to get. And so for that, we created a mystery squash and a mystery melon. So we have those as well. But those are the new varieties for 2023. We just launched them today. So I am very, very excited about it. Um, and, uh, and so I am super, super proud. I'm super honored to carry these varieties. Um, I want to, uh, you know, I want to spend three minutes here. I know I went a little bit long. I was got all, you know, got all talking about all these cool varieties. And so uh, I went a little bit long, but I want to spend three minutes rapid fire, answer any questions you got. Um, and that way we can, um, yeah, that way we can, you know, we can sign off and head to bed. Uh, so what qualifies for sh free shipping? $12 or more, but if you add anything like fertilizer or t-shirts or things like that, obviously you're going to be charged for shipping because those weigh a lot. And so we charge whatever USPS charges, but on seed orders only of $12 or more, you won't pay any shipping at all. Um, <laughs> yes, you got passion about plants again. I am always passionate about what we carry. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Heather. I'm glad you like our seed packaging. Uh, Mrs. Emma Gardner does a phenomenal job. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, Mrs. Emma Gardner uh, has kind of stepped into a new role uh, with Emma Gardner. She still does a lot of the, you know, the event planning. She still does a lot of the, uh, you know, event planning and HR, the hiring process and stuff like that. But she also um, has just now become our chief branding officer. Um, it's something we joke about, we laugh about because it's like, who needs a title? But for her, it's really important that that she has something that she can feel proud of. And so when it comes to branding, whether it's the logos, whether it's the packets, whether it's uh, just the feel of the store, if you guys come into the store, everything that you see, she has her hand in as the chief branding officer. And so she is basically in charge of the entire feel of MI Gardner. And so if you like what you see, make sure you comment and say, you know, great job, Mrs. MI Gardner, or great job, Cindy, because she does a heck of a lot to make the feel what we want and to portray the message that we want to get across, which is we're making gardening fun, we're making gardening accessible, and we're making gardening uh, affordable. And so uh, very, very excited about everything that we're doing. Um, so I do see we have 830 people live. 
Holy smokes. For those of you that joined live late, I apologize. We're actually kind of just ending here. But um, if you want to go check out any of the new varieties we're talking about, uh, go check out migardener.com. There's a tab, so it makes everything really easy for you. You go check out migardener.com, get your seeds. Everything is $2 a pack. Um, everything is heirloom. Everything is uh, grown using organic methods by uh, farmers here in the U.S. So you're supporting small family farms. You are supporting local seed co-ops. You are supporting um, small business. Uh, and you are uh, you're doing your part to increase heirlooms and biodiversity. Uh, and that is really, really important. So, um, all right, we've got time for one more question here. And um, uh, well, so this doesn't really count, but when will dormant plants be available? Dormant plants, everybody, dormant plants, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, uh, asparagus, um, rhubarb, um, any of those, any of those at all will be available in April. April. We're going to have them available in April, early April. We are expecting to have them in. So join the wait list if you are excited about those. We also have some new varieties that we don't yet have on the website that we're going to be carrying this year in terms of dormant plants. But get excited because that's going to be another fun season. It's a great time. So uh, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, um, like I said, uh, rhubarb. Uh, yeah, um, there's a horseradish. So we're going to carry a lot. Um, oh, also dahlias. That's right. Dahlias. Super excited about dahlias. So we're also going to have dahlias available as well. So very, very excited. Very, very excited. Uh, so, um, yeah, with that being said, um, what are the point? I'm oh, sorry. What's the point system? So for every dollar you spend, you get five points. And once you accrue points, you can use them as money off a of future purchase. It's just money that we're giving back for returning customers to say thank you and to show appreciation because we know that you could go anywhere you want for your seeds, but you chose my gardener. And so that means a lot to us. So yeah, you're getting the most seed for your dollar anywhere on the internet. Um, you're getting the highest quality seed anywhere on the internet. Well, any, anywhere really. I mean, we are super proud of our quality, super proud of our price. But on top of all that, we're really proud of you being part of the community. And so when you create an account, you can literally just buy using your account. Those points just build up on your card or on your account. And then you just use them for dollars off. Um, 100 points is like a dollar. So each point is a penny. So it's just kind of a way of saying thank you. Um, so yeah. So anyways, uh, yes, we'll get, be getting more lime basil in. We're going to be getting all the basils. All, like, again, I'll say this before I sign off here. Anything that says out of stock, join the wait list. Within one to five weeks, <laughs> made a pretty wide window there, but within one to five weeks, it will come back in stock. I promise. I promise. <laughs> I absolutely promise. We wouldn't have it on the website right now. We weren't going to be able to get it in. Um, so some of it's just coming off the field. Some of it's in the drying process. Some of it's on its way to us right now. Some of it, some of it we already have. We just haven't packed it yet. So uh, don't worry. We're definitely going to be restocking lots. So with that being said, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. And we'll catch you guys all tomorrow over on YouTube. We're going to be uploading more videos three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now. So we're going to be uploading tomorrow. is going to be our last Tuesday upload for the main growing season. After that, we're going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every day of the week. So get excited. I can't wait to see you guys over there. And uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. Love you all, as always. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. Take care. Bye.